Welcome, curious minds. If you are here, you probably love Mickey Mouse and his iconic creator as much as we do. Today, we'll poke our little whiskered noses into the last Disney's home, the famed Carrollwood Estate. This house on 355 Carrollwood Drive, Los Angeles, was Disney's home. He and his wife Lillian bought the land and soon began construction on their dream home as a 25th anniversary present to themselves in June 1948. The estate had a captivating backstory. Arthur Lett Sr., an English immigrant who made a fortune in L.A., bought a spacious territory in 1930. The owner named the land Holmby Hills, as he was born in Holdenby, Northamptonshire, England. His plans were quite ambitious, to sprinkle immense estates around the property, but the man died in 1923 without fulfilling his dream. His son-in-law, Harold Yance, divided the property with two brothers and transformed it into an it spot for celebrities. This opulent area later became a place of residence for Frank Sinatra, Hugh Hefner, and Marilyn Monroe. The spirit of Arthur Letts Sr. should have been satisfied. It was even more than the former owner had been expecting. Let his soul rest in peace. Movie and theme park magnate Walt Disney, 1901-1966, moved into the Homeby Hills house in 1950. He commissioned architect John Delina to create the two-story split-level main house design. Walt aimed for the rooms to be easier to clean, which would be more practical for the family. The home featured a horseshoe-type configuration. Previously, the family had lived in the hilly Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles, California. What a lovely house it had been. We've already released a video about his storybook Los Angeles mansion. You'll find the link in the description, but today's estate beat all records. First, it had more room to expand. Second, the neighborhood was more private. Third, many other celebrities lived there at that time. A man is known by the company he keeps, you know. A grown-up kid, Walt Disney, added the seasonings to the Delina's design. For instance, he built a red barn that later became his personal workshop where the animator spent numerous hours creating miniatures and model trains. It was his happy place, which deeply connected with his childhood memories. Walt Disney's Homeby Hills home, beyond its charming exterior and innovative backyard railroad, was a marvel of interior design that reflected its owner's unique personality and visionary spirit. Disney's home, featured rooms that were thoughtfully designed with specific themes and motifs, each telling a story or reflecting a personal interest of Disney. The living room, for instance, was often described as cozy yet elegant, with warm woods and comfortable seating arrangements that invited conversation and relaxation. It showcased artwork and memorabilia from Disney's films and travels turning the space into a mini-museum of his achievements and adventures. One of the home's standout features was its state-of-the-art screening room. This was not just a place to watch films. It was a fully equipped cinema that allowed Disney to view the latest studio dailies and screen movies for his family or entertain guests with the newest Disney productions. The screening room was technologically advanced for its time, equipped with professional-grade sound and projection equipment, plush seating, and ambient lighting, making it an ideal setting for immersive film experiences. Walt's barn replicated his family's barn in Marceline, Missouri. The original Marceline barn no longer exists, but in 2001, volunteers rebuilt its replica for Walt's 100th birthday. Little Walter loved spending time under his dreaming tree, learning to draw and dream. His other entertainment was the Disney Circus. Walter dressed up farm animals and charged local children for the show. 
Lillian's love for gardening wasn't just a hobby, it was a source of serenity and beauty in their bustling lives. This was her sanctuary, a place to unwind and nurture her creativity, just as Walt nurtured his through animation. When Walt first proposed the idea of the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad, his miniature train empire, Lillian wasn't exactly thrilled. The thought of her cherished garden being sacrificed for a chugging locomotive was a tough pill to swallow. Walt, ever the charmer and negotiator, knew a compromise was needed. With engineers' help, Walt devised a clever solution, a tunnel. Imagine Lillian's surprise when she learned Walt wasn't just building a train track. He was building it to respect her haven. The tunnel, a marvel of ingenuity, would allow the train to traverse its path without disturbing a single flower bed. This act wasn't just about saving the garden. It was a symbol of Walt's love and respect for Lillian. He understood her passions and found a way to integrate his own dreams without diminishing hers. In 1950, he built the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad, a one-eighth scale backyard steam train that ran around the mansion. According to his daughter Diane Disney Miller, it was the dawn of golden years. Disney spent around $50,000 to shift power lines, lay track, and purchase rolling stock. Jack Evans and his younger brother Bill were in charge of landscaping for the railroad and Homeby Hills estate. The quality of their work impressed Walt so much that he hired them to help landscape Disneyland. Bill Evans worked for Walt Disney for many years, and in 1992, he was honored as a Disney legend with windows on Main Street USA in Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom. According to legend, the railroad inspired Walt to create famous Disneyland theme parks. He placed a control room in the barn and carved out a half-mile track with overpasses, a 46-foot-long trestle, and an S-shaped underground tunnel underneath Lillian's flower beds. Disney even named one locomotive Lily Bell after his wife. You can see its replica in the Walt Disney Family Museum in San Francisco. Now look at this amusing photo. It exudes fun, joy, and excitement. It's not a modern roller coaster, but we wouldn't refuse to take a ride. And you? Gabriel Brenner, Houston Dynamo Soccer Club co-owner, purchased the home from the Carrollwood Estate in 1998, a year after Lillian Disney died. Having spent $8.45 million, Brenner leveled the house. He informed the media about structural damage and a lot of asbestos, which made it impossible to save the house. Nowadays, it is a 35,000 square feet house with eight bedrooms, 17 bathrooms, and a spacious two-story entry foyer resting on a four-acre territory. Outside, there is a pool, tennis court, and putting green. Disney's former home greets visitors with a two-story oval foyer with plaster veneer walls, crown molding, and statuary and verdi jade marble flooring. The inside amenities also include a wine cellar, library, gym, and movie room, with a four-car garage and service area underneath. The dining room is complemented with a dark wood dining table and chairs. The study features extensive wood paneling. The 1,566-square-foot movie room comprises motion picture projection equipment, an ice cream soda fountain, and a liquor bar. From the garage, Walt drove his two daughters to school. He had drivers and a live-in housekeeper, but Disney cared a lot for his children. The family's housekeeper, Thelma Howard, appeared at home in 1951 and remained with Disney's for 30 years. Just opposite to the house tormentor Freakin Bock, a charismatic personage by Astrid Lindgren, Miss Howard quickly became a part of the family. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, they say. It seems that Thelma cooked splendidly, especially Walt's favorite snack, hot dogs, 
which she thoughtfully left in the fridge. Walt Disney called Thelma the real-life Mary Poppins, while the smallest family members called her simply Foo Foo. Walt appreciated her devotion so much that he gave the housekeeper a gift of Disney stock each holiday season. However, it was only worth a little, and some other staff members preferred cash. As Thelma collected her shares, she became a multi-millionaire by the time of her death. She left around $4.5 million to poor and disabled children and nearly the same sum to her disabled son. Now, Carrollwood Estate is estimated at $90 million. This is what we call a smart investment. The area is elite. Homeby Hills, Beverly Hills, and Bel Air form the Platinum Triangle of L.A. After Walt Disney's death in 1966, the estate in Homeby Hills remained a significant part of his legacy, embodying his love for innovation, storytelling, and the sheer joy of bringing dreams to life. Although the house has changed hands and the original railroad is no longer there, the spirit of Disney's creativity and his impact on entertainment continue to resonate. Elements of the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad and memorabilia from Disney's time at the estate are preserved by the Walt Disney Family Museum and the Carrollwood Society, organizations dedicated to celebrating the life and legacy of Walt Disney. Thus, we can see that Walt Disney turned his home into a magical place regardless of the residence. Do you share his vision of a dream house? Is it better than the storybook Los Angeles mansion we discussed earlier? What did you like the most about the estate and its surroundings? Please share your impressions with us in the comments.